before, before I actually start the sermon, um, raise your hand if the words, if the language in the call to worship bothered you. Look back at that call to worship. Ellen, Ellen raises her hand. Anyone else? That call to worship, Cassidy, Jim, all right. Let me tell you, it bothered me to write it. It bothered me to write words like that, especially for a call to worship. However, what I wrote is an accurate paraphrasing of Habakkuk, Habakkuk 3. If you go back and read Habakkuk 3, I mean, I'm sorry, it's right there. Okay, I'm going to address our our discomfort with the words in the call to worship, our possible also discomfort with the children's sermon and swords, and possibly your discomfort with the words of the author of Ephesians. So we're going to be addressing that discomfort with battle, military language. Okay. Armor, a breastplate, shields, Helmets, flaming arrows, swords. When we think of those things, is, is this the type of image you had in mind? Is that what popped into your head? We have the shield, the shield of faith. We have this Roman centurion guard, very masculine, strong big pectorals and eight-pack abs down there, lots of steel and iron. Well, steel, I don't think steel had been in invented yet, but bronze and iron. Maybe, maybe this is what you had in mind. Now, this is directed for kids. I'm, it's a little bit hard to see, but it's like a cartoon figure, but it's the same thing. Look how big that sword is. Very masculine. Very Eurocentric, too, by the way. Or maybe this next image, especially the flaming arrows. My faith with God, the, the faith that I have, can withstand everything that life will throw at me, that evil forces, that society, that unbelievers, Satan, the devil, will throw at me. That's, that's my faith. This morning, we are going to dispel those images. Not because they're militaristic, but because they are inaccurate and do not serve us in our society, in our Christian faith. At the core, at the core of a narrow understanding of this Ephesians passage, the warlike aspect of the Ephesians passage, the, 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 the sword and the knight, at the core of such a narrow understanding lies an extreme spiritualism in which our entire world the physical world here and the spiritual world in which we also believe, at that extreme spiritualism reduces Ephesians, this Ephesians passage, to a cosmic battle between good and evil. It's like a reduction to something so simple in black and white as the kids' sermon. Walking up to Darth Vader, it's, it's easy to hit Jake on the knees. Because, obviously, it's Darth Vader. Or that other character from Despicables, right? Despicables? Okay. Simple good and evil make for great movies, especially for kids, but awful theology an ineffective faith. You won't get far on that faith. It makes for awful religion.
What that does is make our faith, our faith journey, our faith life, a way too simple decision between good and bad. When our spiritual struggle is overly simplified, it is like we get to say, I want to be the knight in shining armor. I want to be the person with the big long sword. I want to be on God's side. At the end of the world, in the great big cosmic battle. Well, who wouldn't want that? That's simple. And that is too easy. In fact, that is wrong. I want to read just by point of comparison. I want to read some, um, some commentary I found online on conservative, fundamentalist, evangelical websites and blog posts about Ephesians 6, about the passage that I just read. Here's what a traditional fundamentalist interpretation of this passage would be like. Quote, we have to be alert. We have to have our defenses up and we have to launch a full-blown attack to send Satan running. A person wearing the armor of God is not slack or indifferent to the forces that he knows will come. He is anticipating an attack. He is vigilant. Notice the masculine language there. This blog post was actually written by a female theologian. But no mention of women, just he. So I guess that's just for the men here. Sorry, women. Another blog post says, Satan is going to fire flaming arrows of doubt at you. He wants to place subtle doubts in your mind about God and God's truth. He knows a spark can ignite a big fire. You will need to feed your faith and starve your doubts. My gosh, that is so simple. Feed your faith, starve your doubts. If I could do that every Sunday, we'd be done. Church would be over in 30 minutes. Is that a, that, no, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Don't want to do that. <laughs> okay. Last blog post. The spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places are only too happy to make trouble for believers like you when given the chance. But the helmet of salvation, the helmet of salvation is hard and resistant to everything that rains down from the air. My goodness. That is a very simplistic way to look at a very complicated passage. Passage of God's word, by the way. If, if the author of Ephesians is not saying these things, then what is the author of Ephesians saying? What battle are we fighting? Because the author of Ephesians there's, there's a battle going on, okay? We cannot deny the fight. Like with the kids over here, we cannot deny a fight. There is a fight to be had. What is the battle? Who is our enemy? Isaiah, the passage that Frank read. Isaiah tells us very clearly who our true enemy is. To paraphrase Isaiah, God saw injustice and it made God mad. God saw truth and facts denigrated in public and it made God mad. 
God saw people without a house, and it made God mad. God saw people without food, and it made God mad. God saw people oppressed by selfish, powerful people, and it made God mad. That's our enemy. Oppression and injustice. And only when God saw that in the Isaiah passage, only then did God put on the armor of God and go to war. Here's the good news. As baptized Christians, when we go down to the waters of baptism, we rise again in a new body, in new clothing. And with that new clothing, we are empowered by God. Baptism is your armor of God. And through the power of baptism, our life with Jesus Christ, our faith in God's mercy and grace through Christ, that is our armor that allows us to fight with the same power as God against oppression and injustice. When we wear that armor, not the, not the battle imagery, not the Roman centurion, when we wear the armor of baptism, then we will, and only then, discover the 10,000 reasons to worship God And the 10,000 reasons to worship God for as long as 10,000 years. Amen.